Hello and welcome to our walk and talk here at Formnext 2021. My today's guest is a true expert. I'm very glad that he will take me through the halls. Good morning, Professor Dr. Schleifenbaum. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Real pleasure. And the AM market has changed. The exhibitors have changed in the last years since we last met in 2019, at least physically met uh, here at the uh, showground. Uh, a lot changed in the market. What is your impression? What is the, um, um, the, the main difference between 2019 and now? Yeah, of course, Corona hit us as well. Um, but as you have experienced throughout the last two years, many of the AM companies changed into producing face shields and producing everything. <laughs> and of course, the development goes on, right? Uh -huh. uh, and that is especially true for additive manufacturing. We realized that there were new products that need to be developed, but we have agile production manners. And we kind of see that here as well. We've got new exhibitors, we've got new technologies, we've got new products, startups currently evolving into more mature companies. Uh, <laughs> and uh, of course, the large ones they are still here they made their business so it's quite dynamics and um, yeah of course times of uncertainty also hit us as a new and young technology but I think personally we made the best of it and if you ask me for um, what are, if you ask the people what was the difference between 2019 and 2021 uh, we are 21 right yes, yeah correct okay, it's corona <laughs> is hitting my brain as well <laughs> um, yeah we develop new things, we develop new products, and the positive, the positive surrounding here gives me the feeling uh, that everybody is right on the right track, and we are, we are back there, uh, back from Corona. We used the time, uh, and we will have a great fair. We had a great fair, and we will have some great fair days, and it's perfectly, and we're all happy to be here again in physics. Okay, and we will have a, a look, a special look, uh, into the details of the exhibitors here, and to see what the, the gems are mm. at this Form Next 2021. Let's at have a look. Some of them. <laughs> Right. Let's talk about metallic additive manufacturing. This here at the Fraunhofer booth is one example of it. What are the mega trends in metallic uh, 3D printing? Yeah, one of the mega trends is obviously, as you can see here, growing bigger. Um, <laughs> As you walk through the hallways the last years, the parts were rather tiny, rather small, and that is still true to some extent. But what we see now here is that we are able to print larger parts. And what's especially uh, interesting is that we try to use or try to reduce the complexity that is inherent in those parts. So we have small structures integrated into large structures. And that forms the complexity that's hard to manage in conventional manufacturing. And we see that now that this is happening here in metallic printing, metallic 3D printing, it's happening in polymer as well, but metallic is a bit more difficult, I guess. And this is something that we realize that we are able to print large parts. This is an example of a jet engine part, uh, of course, highly sophisticated, highly precious metals uh, that we're using there. Uh, it's a nickel-based alloy, uh, and this is hard to manufacture in any case. So we really transform the technologies into a wider range of application, use those for tiny parts, for medium-sized parts, and for large-scale parts, and that is a real advantage from my point of view that we have seen here all throughout the hallways and especially at the front of the booth as well. Parts like that are um hardly foundable so so in, in foundry uh, process uh, um, th this is not possible to do so this is a unique um, uh, possibility that 3d printing has does the fact that the, um, the the components become more complex give an advantage to the additive manufacturing industries absolutely absolutely I mean that's the true value of additive manufacturing that you can now produce those parts in one single step, or the printing is one single step of process, of course you need to be a post-treatment. But if you use the conventional manufacturing, it's not really casting, it's forging, large forging rings, and then you mill like 90, 95% away, and then you post-treat it in several other steps. So you reduce the complexity of the process, change to that single process, combine the, the, the features for free that you can do with 3D printing, and that's true value. That's great, and now I would like to have a look at the polymer additive manufacturing. Let's go there. <laughs> All right then, so here we are uh, in, in 12.1. This is the area where most polymer additive manufacturing parts are displayed. But in this case, it's not only um, the, the printing process which is in focus, 
but something that is very much in focus this year here at Formnex, right? right? The process. Right. Actually, in fact, is everything but the AM process. <laughs> uh, here we see, and this is really amazing from my point of view, because AM is meant to print parts that are not similar to each other. Every part can be an individual. But what you have to do then afterwards, and industrial automation, you normally do it like lots of lots of similar parts being automated, being produced at cheaper costs. Now every individual, like you see here, such a part is totally different with such a part. Mm -hmm. And now you want to handle them automatically, you want to quality control them, you want to post-process them, you want to label them. And how to do that now? Printing? No issue. But now you see more and more solutions where you have the ability to really automatically identify them, qualify them, not really qualify, doing the qualification process or the quality inspection process, doing the post-processing, labeling them, no touch, no human interaction, all automated. And this is really new and this is the way we need to go, I think. So it seems to me as if in the past we have been talking about the basics, that means the printing process itself, the machines to print 3D, uh, and, and uh, in the meantime we have arrived to the reality, yeah. the industrial yeah. reality, yeah, yeah, so we need to incorporate the printing process into the industrial world, right? Yeah, and that's the good news. The printing process is there. <laughs> the printing process is there. We need not to talk about, of course, we need more materials, we need incremental innovation at each and every step. But now the next stage is to integrate that into process chains. And that we can see here perfectly. Um, exemplary for uh, some other partners uh, that, they, that they work with, um, that you have the complete automated process chain available now, and this will set it up to a whole new level. It's not only the printing, it's the integration into industrial process chains, individualized perfectly with a single one-piece flow, each part different from each other. That's perfect. Extremely exciting. Yeah. <laughs> So after this beautiful tour through the halls here, I have the impression that um, the AM community has changed quite a lot in the recent years. Uh, in the very beginning there were um, individual companies mm -hmm. and now what you've shown me are networks. Uh, companies and people cooperating to fulfill the demand of the industry. Is that impression right? Yeah, absolutely. I would totally agree. Uh, I, I think once we get over this point that 3D printing can solve everything and is in the core of a process chain, we realize um, that we need some other puzzle pieces to fulfill that promise that 3D printing can really fulfill every dream, uh, every creative dream to get it in the palm of your hand. And what I, my, my personal persuasion is that we need to have the corporations because the single steps in that process chain, both on a physical and on a digital level, are way too complex for an individual company to solve. And therefore, um, I see great potential in networks and I think personally uh, the whole community shares that. Um, we see new companies evolving. One example is in the electron beam uh, field, new companies from the electron beam field coming up. Uh, three new companies actually this trade fair and they are all cooperating. They don't want to say, okay, we are competitors. No, we play on the same market and we want to make the, the, the whole pie, the, the whole cake bigger rather than just talking about who gets with which, uh, which piece of the cake and which pie. Um, and therefore, which part of the pie? Uh, and therefore, I guess um, this is common sense that the cooperation part, uh, and you see that with all the networks, uh, with the ACAM that we have, with other networks, that this is really a crucial point and facilitates the whole industry and in the end it makes more than just one plus one is two, it equals more than one plus one is three and that's really my, my lessons learned from this trade fair uh, and from Forum Next 2021. Professor Schleifenbaum, it was a great pleasure, thank you very much for your insights. <laughs> and my thank pleasure. And thank you for watching, see you next time, bye. Thank you, next time. <laughs>